I would describe our garden as the Southwest cottage. Um, so I really love cottage gardens. I love, just love all of the flowers. Carlos tends to be more of the, the cacti enthusiast. Hi, I'm Ashley Nava Monteros. And I'm uh, Carlos Monteros. We bought this house back in November 2020. Uh, when we moved in, it was nothing but turf, right? Greater built yeah, turf. Yeah, Bermuda grass. After the big freeze is when we really just started working on it. A lot of this garden has been inspired by CTG. That's where we discovered a lot of the plants that are native to this region or more adaptable and um, tend to be more drought tolerant. And so it's just been a whole process of learning about different plants, going to the nursery, checking them out, and then just figuring out, okay, like where can we place them? When you are dealing with clay soil, especially if it is rocky clay soil, so soil that has both clay and rocks in it, you're not gonna have a lot of luck dealing with a regular shovel. You're gonna wanna use a pick. The goal of my butterfly bicycle trip was to be a voice for the monarch and to, to really tell people that they need our help. The monarchs need us to share our yards with them. And of course, halfway through my trip, I realized I had a lot to say and I had a lot of opinions. And often I was a little, I was very angry, I shouldn't say a little, I was very angry at the state of the planet and how much we've stolen from the monarchs and how we've just refused to share. So about halfway through, I said, I'm gonna write a book. My favorite part about the migration is that it's multi-generational. So when I left Mexico in March of 2017, I was biking with literally thousands of monarchs, not only for a few miles, turns out monarchs don't follow roads, but I eventually would weave my way back and forth north and I'd see a monarch or two, and I'd know that it was the end of their journey. I knew that every single monarch I was starting with was going to die before I returned in November, and that's because it's a generational migration. The monarch is an ambassador to nature. So when we're protecting the monarch, we're protecting the spiders, we're protecting the frogs, we're protecting the birds. My intention is to have a garden to where it's minimal upkeep. And uh, it's also paying respects to the, the plants and the wildlife that were already here before we got here. The Mealy Blue Sage had so many bumblebees throughout the summer. The birds, the bees, the butterflies come in and just seeing how minimal effort it, it took in some ways, right? I mean, like just having a bird bath, having a bird feeder and having the plants and just kind of creating that habitat, right? And I think that's part of the reason why we have such a productive vegetable garden too. One of my favorite things about the monarch is, is that they do, they connect us all and they connect our efforts. So often uh, a person will be gardening in their yard and they'll have just a small little garden and it can feel a little hopeless, right? Like, oh, how is this little garden contributing to this huge problem? But I was able to bike between all these gardens and I was able to see, wow, that garden plus that garden plus that garden adds up. And I've actually come to see the monarch as sort of a symbol for this this idea that small is big, right? So when you go to Mexico in the OML fir forest, you'll see millions of monarchs hanging from the branches. And one monarch might wiggle a, like a needle of a OML fir tree, but when you get thousands together, it'll actually be enough collective weight that they can break a branch. So if butterflies can come together and break a branch, then we can come together, share a little bit of our yards, and metaphorically make make change, bend those branches ourselves. I consider the monarchs my teachers, and I think they, they taught me how to see the world from a new perspective. My vision and my hope is that we can start to see the world and share the world with monarchs, and we can share the world with cyclists, and we can also share the world with, with people that don't look like me, with people of color that might feel too scared for good reason to camp behind a church. I think the monarchs helped me see that, and I think they continue to help me see that. And I think the more we can see, and the more we can sh see the world through the perspective of different people, and different animals, and different plants, the, the healthier the world will be for everyone.